Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I used pastel sticks and pastel pencils combined together to achieve this portrait study. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Just going through this outline pretty quickly, I'm just doing a centre point there in a four inch square and from that centre point I'm using imaginary angles to get where the actual shapes are. So just going for the bigger shapes to start with and then I'm just getting smaller and smaller. I'm using a 708 Carbothella pencil there, it's a nice grey colour which sort of works well when it's rubbed out you can't really see where it's been just try and keep everything nice and loose and just really relaxing and just letting it flow just open the heart let go of the mind and just see the whole image rather than trying to focus drawing every little bit just keep your vision open and then compare one shape against the other and it seems to just come together. Here's a selection of Rembrandt pastel sticks I'm using. I don't normally use the stick form to start with, so this is request from a Patreon. Um, so I'm using the sticks first, then I'll be using the pencils over them. Now these Rembrandt sticks are really rich in vibrancy. So what I decided to do is keep the colours the same as what I normally use uh, but just block it in like I would normally um, using the warm red, yellow ochre and the white but I'm using brown initially to get the shadows rather than using dark green at this stage. Now you notice the colours are really bright and too saturated and too vibrant I'll desaturate all that with the pencils on the top later but it's just a matter of just placing this pigment in so you've got some rich colours to play about with. What I tend to do is just spot it onto the board just to see where the location is of the edge of the stick and then you've got the actual direction of the flow of it because uh, you can sort of get lost because it's such a chunky uh, stick sometimes it's hard to locate the actual edge of it so but once you do that so you dot it in first and then you can move to what direction you want keep you relaxed is just to realize that this is just a blocking stage so don't worry about the details it's all about just getting that pigment down and then you've got something to move around then when you start putting the pencils on I'm always open to try different things uh, because this was a request as well I thought well I'll give it a go um, and it's quite inter it was quite interesting to do actually uh, getting that pigment that really rich pigment down first because normally I do an underdrawing with chalky pencils and build it up and build the texture up so you know it's a totally different procedure but I'm using the same colors so I always like to use you know the basic sort of primaries and secondaries rather than using all these pre-mixed colors because you can never get the exact shade you're looking for so it's a really good idea to actually learn how to mix them from these basic colors now the surface i'm using is pastel mat which is a sanded board and the actual pastel looked quite grainy on it uh, so i'm using my finger here and there just to blend it um, but when i start putting the soft chalky pencils over the top I can be able to use all this pigment to mix it together to create a nice vibrant look to it. Now it's time to go over that really rich pigment I've put down with the sticks and I'm using the pastel pencils now so this is the Carbothella white I'm just going over now tinting everywhere and preparing my way for glazing over the top with other colours so I'm creating the texture now reducing that sort of graininess to it. Now I like to work on the whole at the same time so I'm going from one area to other just preparing certain parts because sometimes it's 
my instinct tells me to go and do a certain area first and then that will help me to get the value and the colours right in other areas so I decided to get the darkest sort of shades here in the shadow uh, using that white again to create the texture and soften things and then desaturate the red with the olive green and then I've gone over them with the cold red and used the dark green then to desaturate Now I'm using a pencil which is very similar to the actual background colour there on the pastel mat using that to actually shape the ear because I'm not going to put a background in there it's just a study at the end of the day so I'm just using that just to soften that edge up a little but trying to keep that loose feel to it and more of a painterly feel because we're using these sticks it creates more of a painterly feel from the very start if you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Using blue and the brown to create natural greys, rather than using black and white. And then just warming it up here and there with a little bit of warm red. And add in that little bit of lemon yellow just to create that zinginess. So anything that feels as though it's glowing, just adding that little bit of lemon yellow just makes all the difference. Creates a really nice chroma feel to it. Now I always put the white down first on these highlights, really bright. And then what I'll do then is subtle it up with glazes over the top. But it always starts off just using the white first. So I use white, glaze over, white, glaze over. The shadow areas here is dark green, warm red, and then the olive green. So you're just mixing things up really just to create that subtlety. There's all sorts of different reflected light and, and colour changes in the shadows. So you've got to change up using different reds, different greens. There's always a warm and cold colour. And then on the edge of that I just went through there with the lemon yellow and red just to create a subtle change from the light to the dark so it's not a sharp change. Now there's a chance that you could get really overwhelmed with all the sort of colour subtleties and cause you sort of to freeze. The way I get around all that is to stay in the moment, let go of thinking too much, to thinking about what's got to be done, just keep focusing on the oneness, just being connected to the energy of the subject, it keeps me sort of centred and it seems to just flow without any thought. So that's the best approach really when, you've, when you're up against all this sort of subtlety, is to just relax, let go, stay in the moment, focus on the energy, not name anything, don't think, oh now I've got to do the eyes now, I've got to do the eyebrows. Just see it as all light and shade and just compare different shades and different subtleties with each other and you seem to sort of flow with it then. Just like to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons for their wonderful support every month. I can't thank you enough, it means the world to me. If you're interested or considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below for more details. Well, from time to time I do look in the mirror, so I'm, I'm sort of turning myself around and looking over my shoulder at the actual drawing and just to see if there's anything that needs to be changed because seeing it from a different angle brings out imperfections and I noticed that the eyes wasn't correctly drawn, it was too big. So this is what I'm doing here, is just changing things around. It's easy enough to do. Because you're using the primaries and the secondaries, you know, moving the flesh tones around as well, is it's just, it makes it a lot easier because you know that it's not going to get muddy so you it creates relaxation it's just a case of just sort of 
being spontaneous with it really and not worry too much about you made a mistake um, it's just keeping patient perseverance is the key and just don't name things just see it as part of the process and make it so that at any time you can change things and then you don't worry about it you know it's it just sort of flows then the key thing is to change any colour into a neutral colour by using its complementary so it makes it into a grey and then you can put any colour on grey and it won't become muddy if you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow I needed to make that a little bit more vibrant just under the uh, eye there uh, so I used actually a pre-mixed pastel stick um, which is like a, a red with white in basically and that created that sort of vividness I needed under the eyes there and basically what it is now I'm doing is just going round looking at the whole image putting blue to make it cooler adding lemon yellow to make it warmer in places or yellow ochre basically what you're doing is looking at the temperature the tints the values the edges all this is in your awareness at the same time as actually connecting to the energy of the subject so there's a lot going off but all this is automatic as you get used to it it all becomes sort of second nature now i love drawing shadows there's a lot going off in shadow very much uh, spiritual shadows are there's there's so much feeling in them and colors um fascinating to create so here i'm just making sure that i really let go and just sense all this subtle change in temperature i really enjoy creating that and also reflected light as well that's uh, reflecting underneath the nose there and on the nostril that's quite fascinating to do as well Slant down to real time now so you can see how I've done the moustache part of the beard. It's the same procedure as what the beard is anyway, but it's mapping it out with the white. And then once you're happy with the position of it, then you're glazing over with certain colours. Now here I'm using like a burnt sienna colour to go over them using brown and blue mix with it to create the subtle shadows that's needed. Now this is a great tool to have in your kit, it's a colour shaper, really good, it's like a brush with a silicone tip on and it's very good just to sort of soften those edges which is really important for the latter parts of your drawing or painting, uh, it just creates the realism, so if there's anything wrong with your painting it's either your values are not right or your edges. Thanks for watching the video right till the end, I really appreciate it been really interesting to study this um, if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and leave a message in the description below if there's any details that you're not sure about or if there's anything actually that you find difficult with pastels please let me know because I can do a, a tutorial for you and see if I can solve the uh, issue so if you leave a message let me know and I'll sort something out but if you in the meantime if you're wanting to see any more of my work Please check out this video here. Take care. Bye.